Hello. This is Creating a Safe Environment for Children, a webinar presented by Kids in Danger. Here's an overview of what we'll be talking about today. We're going to start with an introduction to KID and an overall overview of the product safety system. We'll then talk about individual product hazards. We'll then go into safety resources you can use, as well as next steps to ensure the safety of your children. So let's start thinking about product safety in your own life. What do you focus on when purchasing products for children? Do you consider value, safety, recommendations of friends or family? Have any of these products ever posed a safety hazard to you or to your child? If so, what did you do? Keeping that in mind, let's talk about the foundations of Kids in Danger. Kid was started by Linda Ginzel and Boaz Kaiser after the death of their son Danny in 1998. Danny was in his Chicago child care facility when his play school portable travel light clarib collapsed around his neck, strangling him. At first, his parents thought this was a one-off accident. However, further research showed that Danny was the crib's fifth victim, and in total, 19 children died in cribs of this design. Despite the fact that Danny died in 1998, this crib was actually recalled five years earlier, but nobody at the facility, including the state inspector, who was just there one week prior, was aware of the recall. And as anyone that cares or has children knows, portable cribs are just one of the many products parents and caregivers use to care for their children. But it's just one of many products that could potentially prove dangerous as well. This slide provides some injury and death data in the United States as a result of unsafe products. As you can see from the top fact, unintentional injuries are the leading cause of death among children five and under. 2014 data shows us that 112 children died that year in child product related incidences and 336,000 children were treated in hospital emergency rooms for product related incidences. Now we do not share these numbers with you to scare you but rather because we believe that awareness and action can help change these numbers and ultimately keep kids safe. The word recall is a word a lot of us throw around, but sometimes we forget what that actually means. Here you will see the life of a recall. A recall might surprise people because it's a partnership between the manufacturer and the CPSC. CPSC is Consumer Product Safety Commission, and it's a government agency that's responsible for product safety in this country. And it's an acronym throughout this webinar that we will be referring to. After that partnership, the recall is listed on cpsc.gov. There's usually three things that can happen after a recall with the product. The product can be returned, it can be replaced, or it can be repaired. Now a lot of questions are posed once we start talking about recalls. And one common question is, well do children have to be injured or killed before a recall were, will occur? And the answer is no. Sometimes we see recalls that have zero injuries or zero deaths to children. And sometimes we unfortunately don't see a recall until a lot of injury and unfortunately sometimes death has happened. There is no deadline for consumers, meaning that I might be able to return a product now that was recalled over a year ago. Unfortunately, only 10% of recalled products are ever corrected. This in part is because news about recalls doesn't always reach parents and caregivers as effectively as we would like it to. So what that means is that about 90% of recalled products are still out in circulation in our homes, in our childcare facilities, at garage sales, and available online. So let's recap what we've talked about so far with a little quiz. Don't worry, you won't be graded. Who issues a recall alert? A, the CPSC issues all recalls independently, B, the CPSC partners with the manufacturer to issue a recall. C, recalls are issued by the court. D, none of the above.
if you selected B, you're right. The CPSC partners with the manufacturer to issue a recall. Let's go on to the second part of the presentation, which is a look at major hazard areas. We're going to start with our youngest children and work our way up to older children. Let's start with our youngest children. When we talk about safe sleep, we're specifically talking about safe sleep for babies one and under. Oftentimes, the message of safe sleep can be a little bit overwhelming. So what we find very effective to share with parents and caregivers is a picture of safe sleep, which you see right here. Think about what you see in that picture and what you don't see in that picture. What you see in that picture is a baby alone in a crib with nothing else in the crib besides a mattress and a tight-fitting mattress sheet. What you don't see in that picture are any type of accessories, including sleep aids. You don't see any crib decorations, such as crib bumper pads. You don't see heavy blankets, quilts, or toys. And you'll also notice that that baby has its own sleep space, meaning it is not sharing a couch, it is not sharing a bed with parents, caregivers, or pets. The picture you see on your left is a safe sleep environment, and this is what we would recommend uh, children under one to sleep. What you also might have noticed in that picture is that baby was sleeping in a crib. Kid worked very hard with other safety advocates back in 2008 to pass a new crib safety standard. That standard went into effect on June 28, 2011. Any crib made on or after June 28, 2011 meets the strongest crib standards in the world. An overview of those standards is below. Safe sleep can be somewhat of an overwhelming topic, but we can boil it down to this main statement of safe sleep right here. Kids' statement, statement of safe sleep is a baby sleeps safest in a crib, play yard, or bassinet that hasn't been recalled and meets the federal standard. The only product in a crib should be a tight fitting mattress with a fitted sheet. Babies should be placed on their back and wear footed pajamas or wearable blankets when needed. Now let's talk about some choking hazards. A few things to keep in mind when it comes to choking hazards for young children is to watch out for small breakable parts. Also, Understand that hazards differ for the older and younger child. This can be especially challenging if you're in a facility that accommodates children of multiple ages. In general, we advise parents and caregivers to use the toilet paper tube test. If a product fits inside a toilet paper tube, it is too small and therefore it's a choking hazard for children under three. On this slide, we've listed a few products in particular that are choking hazards for children. In the United States, balloons are the number one choking hazards for children. So while you might want to have them at your next party, remember they are a big safety hazard. You'll also see a picture here of polymer balls. They are small toys that grow when placed in water. They will also grow to a similar size if ingested by a child. In general, we remind parents and caregivers, small parts, not small minds, when it comes to toys for young children. Let's talk about magnet ingestion. Magnet toys for both children and adults are really popular right now, but unfortunately, they are also responsible for lots of injuries and unfortunately, even deaths as a result of ingesting magnets. Now the magnets we're talking about are especially strong. They're not really your refrigerator type of magnet. They are so strong that they usually come in sets 
where they are completely connected together, or they're part of a toy whose whole appeal is about connecting magnets. As you can imagine, it's very difficult for doctors to diagnose and treat magnet ingestion and can often require surgical removal. Some magnets are especially strong. What you will see here in this slide is what really strong magnets can do within the body. No, they are not a choking hazard, but they are an ingestion hazard because incredibly strong magnets can attract within the body. Other ingestion hazards. Unfortunately, we're constantly running into other products that enter the market that also pose hazards for children. The first is button batteries. These are a tricky hazard because they're found in many household items and they can cause internal damage within hours. If you just think for a second, you'll realize how many items in your home have button batteries. Ideally, the button battery is not accessible without a tool. Detergent pods. These are really popular right now, but unfortunately they're also really appealing to children because they resemble candy, as you see in the picture here. Currently, no childproof containers are required for detergent pods, making them all that more accessible to children. A third emerging hazard is liquid nicotine for e-cigarettes. These are often coming in kid-friendly flavors with cartoon characters on the bottle like you see here. But thankfully, recent regulations were passed so that these products do have to have child-resistant packaging in the future. A last hazard we'd like to talk about is TV and furniture tip-overs. Currently, we're seeing about one child every two weeks die as a result of a piece of furniture or television toppling over on them. To prevent tip-over hazards in your home or your facility, we suggest that you mount TVs to the wall and you anchor furniture as part of your child-proofing process. You can also avoid putting appealing products on top of a shelf so a child is less likely to try and get that product. Furniture anchoring straps can be purchased at any baby store and safety stores. Now that we've reviewed product hazards, let's do a quiz. What products are safe to use with a sleeping baby? A, crib bumper pads. B, blankets and pillows. C, a crib made after June 28, 2011 that has not been recalled and D, sleep positioners that were not prescribed by a doctor. If you selected C, you're absolutely right. That is the one product of all the products listed there that are actually safe to use with baby. So let's go into the third part of the presentation. We've talked a little bit about product safety in general and why an organization like KID exists We've also talked about product hazards, but now let's talk about what you can do to keep the children in your care safe from unsafe products. Step one, you can learn about the problem, and the good news is you're doing that right now. There's two websites that can really be your resource. The first website is cpsc.gov. Again, that was Consumer Product Safety Commission, cpsc.gov. This is where you would go to look up a specific product that you're interested in finding out more about. This site is also where you would go to get real-time alert updates about recalls for not only children's products, but for all products. By visiting kidsindanger.org, you can get general product safety information. So again, you can't look up specific products here, but you can look up general information about a product type you might be interested in. So for example, if I wanted to find out about crib bumper pads in general and their safety, I would go to KID. 
But if I wanted to look up a specific brand of crib bumper pads, I would go to cpsc.gov. At Kids in Danger's website, you can sign up to get monthly email alerts, including our monthly recall digest, which is a poster that has all the recalls from that past one month. Step two, check your products for recalls. We talked a little bit about this in the previous slide, but by visiting cpsc.gov, you can check your products for recalls at home. Now let's say you're not at home and you're out shopping and before you buy that product, whether at a large store, a specialty store, or even a garage sale, you wanna check the product for recalls. All you have to do is pull out your smartphone and go to kidsindanger.org. What you will get on your phone is a screenshot like you see here. And on the top of the screen, you're able to enter the product that you specifically want to see has been recalled. Again, this site is only available through your smartphone device. Step three, act. There's several things you can do to help spread the word and to help generate more awareness about child product safety. The first is if you work in a facility or even just with other parents or caregivers, alert your colleagues by sharing some of the information you learned today. Second, if you did have an incident with a product, report the incident or the injury to saferproducts.gov. When you're out shopping, take a look around and see if retailers have actually posted the recalls. They're required to, but they can often be very difficult to find. KID has some wonderful resources, all of which are free to parents and caregivers. Feel free to contact us if you're interested in our free safety poster or our educational safety booklet. Both are available in English and Spanish. Lastly, you can join with us and advocate for child safety. The more people that add their voice to ours, the stronger it will be. In the last slide, we talked about how to report an unsafe product. It's often reports like these that ultimately lead to recalls, so it's an incredibly important and effective website. This is where you can go to report injury and safety information, not only for children's products, but for all products. We understand that parents and caregivers are busy, so why would you spend the time to do this? Think of it like Yelp and like Foursquare. It's an opportunity to warn other parents and caregivers about your, ex your safety experience with a product. If you forget about this website, you can access it through cpsc.gov, so don't worry. When you get a durable child's product, you might notice that it comes with a product registration card. What do I mean by durable product? I'm not talking about toys that generally will not come with product registration cards. What I am talking about is products that you would have more long term. For example, cribs, play yards, strollers, high chairs. These products must include a product registration card. Oftentimes, parents and caregivers are confused by this card. They assume that the company will start sending them unsolicited information or use their information in another way. However, that is against the law. The only thing a manufacturer can do with this information is contact you in the event of a recall. If you don't have the card, don't worry. KIT has compiled links to all the manufacturer's registration pages on our website. So visit kidsindanger.org to access that database. Let's do one last quiz. How can you check your products for recalls? A, by visiting kidsindanger.org from your mobile device. B, by visiting cpsc.gov from your computer. C, by visiting kidsindanger.org from your computer or D, A and B.
Just a warning, this one's a little bit tricky. If you selected D, you're absolutely right. Remember, kidsindanger.org from your computer does not pull up recalls. It pulls up general product safety information. So we've just shared a lot of information you, with you. So what's next? There's a couple of things you can do to keep the information going and to keep the learning process going. First, you can sign up for email alerts. KID sends out a once a month email alert with all the recent recalls and product safety news. Second, you can check your products for recalls through cpsc.gov and through KID's mobile site. You can also share what you know with families friends, and colleagues. Print and post the Recall Digest in your workplace or your facility. This really, help gets, really helps to get the word out about recalls. If you have an incident with an unsafe product, please report it to saferproducts.gov. As we said, this often informs the recall process. Lastly, if you think someone else could benefit from this webinar, please send it their way. We're so glad that you joined us today to learn more about product safety, but the conversation does not have to end here. Please consider connecting with KID on the internet. As you can see, we're active um, on several social media sites and our blog is updated two to three times a week. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it and we hope that you've learned a lot from this webinar. If you would like additional information, if you have a question or just wanna get in contact, here's our contact information. Thank you again so much for joining us and for your commitment to keep the children in your care safe.